to Online Sunday School. We're going to just jump in to our lesson for this week. We're going to read our series big idea, which we're going to be talking about for the next couple of weeks. On the whiteboard here, our series big idea, it says, Because Jesus gave his life as a sacrifice for our sins, he calls us to sacrif <clears throat> sacrificial living. So that's what we've been talking about and what we're going to continue to talk about for the next couple of weeks. This week in particular, our lesson big idea, again, if you want to join me on the board, is because Jesus gave his life as a sacrifice for our sins, we can live free from the power of sin, right? So this week we're gonna be talking about how Jesus' sacrifice, his ultimate sacrifice, allows us to live a life that is free from sin. We don't have to be bound by sin, we don't have to be oppressed by sin, because Jesus has freed us from that sin with his sacrifice. It is so amazing. And Brother Dion and Sister Christina are gonna be telling us a little bit more about that coming up. But why don't we go ahead and review our series memory verse again. If you wanna join me on the board, let's read that together. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Roman 12, 1. Right, so that we talked a little bit about last week, how this scripture is calling us to be a living sacrifice. It's calling us to live a holy life. And it's a reasonable service. And that's just saying that, well, it's the least you can do is to set yourself apart, to be holy, and to be a living sacrifice. So that is what our memory verse is talking about. It's a big memory verse, I know. It's a little bit wordy. So to help us remember it, why don't we try and read it a couple of different ways? You guys ready? Okay. This one might be hard because it's so big. Even I might mess up. But let's try and see how fast we can read this memory verse. Are you guys ready? Okay. On the count of three. One, two, three. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself, your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. Romans 1, 12, 1. Oh, oh, that was super fast. You know what? I did. I kind of messed up a little bit. It's just so big. Right? So why don't we... Slow it down. You guys ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Romans 12, 1. All right, so we read our memory verse a couple of different ways. We've reviewed what we're gonna be talking about this week and what we're gonna be talking about for the next couple of weeks. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand this over to my next friend. Bye guys. Hey guys. I'm excited to be here with my friends Hank and Petunia. Say hi to my other friends, Hank and Petunia. Hello, everybody. How are you? Hi, guys. So today we're talking about some pretty heavy stuff. It's kind of a big deal, and it's a little bit sad when you think about it, but it's important to talk about. Today we are talking about how Jesus died on a cross so that way we could be free of all our sins or we could be free of the bondage that brings us down when we have sin in our hearts and we have sin in our lives it kind of makes us feel heavy it makes us feel like we're weighed down like all the problems in the world are on our shoulders and it, it's hard to get by when you have sin in your life but that's why it is so important to have Jesus flowing through you and just covering you with his grace and with his blood. When he went on that cross, 
He shed his blood so that way you and I could be washed clean by it and that we could live a holy life. Do you guys know, Hank and Petunia, do you guys know of the children that were in bondage and they were slaves to Egypt? Well, uh, I do remember. I think I remember that story from the Bible. Uh, it's Moses' story, right? That's right. Petunia, how did they feel? Well, I'd imagine that it didn't feel very good at all to be in slavery. They were working super hard and those Egyptians were big old meanies. That's right. They were scared, they were annoyed, they were tired, they were over it. And finally, Moses came in and helped them break free of that bondage and they were able to be free and they were grateful for the opportunity. There was some uh, problems along the way, but in the long run, God's people ended up being free. Moses helped God's people and they were super happy to be free of the bondage and the sins that were all around them in Egypt. So I have a little video I want to show you guys, you two, Hank and Petunia, and it's a fun activity. And I think maybe you guys can try it at home. All you need is an ice cube and a small toy. And you can put the small toy in an ice cube and, well, you can put the small toy in water that will turn into an ice cube. Maybe you can have a small cup. You can fill it up with some water, place a little toy in there and put it in the freezer. Once it's frozen, you can pour hot water over top of it and you can watch all that ice melt away and the toy can break free. It's kind of like how Jesus pours his blood over us and all our sin melts away. So it's a really fun activity and I have a video to show you guys of it so you guys have a better idea how to do it. Maybe you guys can try it at home. What do you guys think? Sounds like fun? Sounds like fun. Here, let me pull my video up for you guys to watch. You ready? What did you guys think? Oh, I thought that was amazing, Sister Christina. So with that being said, us having a little more of an idea of what it's like when Jesus washes away our sins and we're free of the bondage, I'm going to pass it now to Brother Dion, who's going to tell us the story of Jesus' crucifixion. Less than one week ago, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a young donkey. As he did, the people gathered and shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna. They waved branches and paved the street with their own coats so that the donkey's feet would not touch the ground. They were praising Jesus as their soon coming king. Today, however, the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, had Jesus arrested. He presented Jesus to the people, and the people shouted, Crucify him! Pilate did not want to crucify Jesus because he found no fault in Jesus, but the people insisted. They said, Anyone who claims to be the Son of God should be put to death. Confused, Pilate brought Jesus into his private quarters and asked, Where are you from? While Jesus could have defended himself, he said nothing. Pilate was offended. Why won't you speak to me? Don't you know I have the power to release you? Jesus did not blame Pilate for the situation. The sin lay on the shoulders of the crowd who had brought him there. While the crowd got their wish, Jesus carried his own heavy cross to the outskirts of the city to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. Jesus was not crucified alone. They raised up his cross between the crosses of two convicted criminals. Over Jesus' head, Pilate had a sign hung that read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. It was written in 
Aramaic, Latin, and Greek, so everyone could read it. The king of the Jews was sentenced to die like a common criminal. The soldiers treated Jesus like they would any other criminal. On the cross, Jesus said, I thirst. Instead of water, the soldiers dipped a sponge in vinegar and raised it to his mouth. After he tasted of the vinegar, Jesus said, it is finished. Then he bowed down his head and gave up his spirit. Jesus did not mean his earthly ministry was done, and he didn't just mean his time of teaching his disciples was over. He meant that by willingly giving his life as an atonement for the sins of the whole world, he had broken the chains of sin. He had finished what he came to earth to do. He had made a way for people everywhere to be set free from their sins. John fifteen thirteen. Jesus said, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. From the moment Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, every man, woman, and child ever born was chained by sin and could not get free on their own. We all needed a Savior to break the chains of sin. Jesus did that when he willingly gave his own life on the cross. When he said, It is finished, he meant the journey for him to free us from sin was finally completed. For his death to free us of our sin, we must repent, be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of our sins, and he will fill us with the Holy Ghost. Then we are no longer prisoners to sin. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty There's nothing my God cannot do My God is so big and so strong and so mighty There's nothing my God cannot do My God is so big and so strong and so mighty There's nothing my God cannot do My God is so big and so strong and so mighty There's nothing my God So my
All right, guys, so we just finished uh, talking about our Bible story. Uh, we learned about Jesus, you know, and the ultimate sacrifice that he gave. And, you know, we've been talking about sacrifice for the last few weeks. Um, but, you know, like I said, we're talking about Jesus giving the ultimate sacrifice. And because Jesus gave that ultimate sacrifice of his own life, we we have the ability to be forgiven of our sins and be able to live with him in heaven one day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and like we've been talking about, it went because Jesus gave his sacrifice, we should be able to be willing to sacrifice things for Jesus. So we're just going to go ahead and pray and wrap up this week's lesson. So dear Jesus, we love you and we thank you so much for this opportunity to still meet online for Sunday school and learning your word. And God, I pray, Lord, that you would keep this lesson hidden in our hearts. God, we thank you, Lord, for that you died on the cross for us, God, though, that we have the ability to be forgiven of our sins, God, and that we will one day be able to live with you forever. And God, I pray, Lord, that you would just help us, God, to understand sacrifice, God, that we would just be willing to sacrifice in our lives for you, God, just as you sacrificed for us. And God, and I pray, Lord, that you would keep us safe throughout this week. God, and that we would be able to meet back online again really soon. And Lord, I pray that we're able to meet in person very, very soon. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Guys, we'll see you again next time.